Patriots, perfect example. Giants, they're at six. They have some options. Do they move up? Do they stay put? Do they not take a quarterback? Because they, you know, have said publicly they they believe Daniel Jones is going to come back and is still, uh, you know, um, a a more than successful starter in the NFL. So my question for you is, let's just use New England as an example. And you got Knicks and Penix that's out there potentially to be traded up for in the back half of the first round. Do you go, is Marvin Harrison that good that you go and take the kid, Marvin Harrison Jr., third, or, or, or move around and take him there and forego Drake May or Jaden Daniels to take him and then go and get Knicks and Penix because you like him that much? Would you, would you counsel that or no? You consider it, but at the end of the day, the number one priority has to be let's get the quarterback right. And I think the Patriots are a great example because you look at uh, the situation with Robert Kraft. He's, I think, what, 84 maybe? Uh, He just watched an offense last year where it was it was a train wreck and i don't think he's ready to go through that again he he doesn't want to go through a, a so-so offensive season uh just to get the wide receiver he he wants that injection of life he wants that quarterback now you have elliot wolf who's uh 40 years younger and i think he'd be more open to a trade back situation or a marvin harrison jr uh as opposed to taking the quarterback because he sees maybe more of the long term but drafting a quarterback in the first round especially the top 10 that is an ownership pick, and that is a big part of this conversation is the ownership has to be – and the Giants are a great example of that. We know that they are – they we know they like Daniel Jones, and at the end of the day, if they don't draft a quarterback, the Giants, uh, in, in, with that sixth pick, you can pretty much bet that came from ownership. They want to see Daniel Jones out there. They're not ready to throw in the towel on him yet. So with all, all these teams, we have to remember that the ownership plays a big part in who ultimately each of these teams drafts in the top ten. Yeah, Robert Kraft, 82, just to throw that out okay, there. there but no, but I, I, I totally get your point. Before I let you go, Dane, um, the prospect you love. You're just like, you know what, I'll pound the table for this guy. Um, Not enough people talking about him. You know what I'm talking about with you right here. Lay that one out for me. Who is that? Uh, I'll go with Malik Washington, a receiver from Virginia who, look, nobody should be compared to Steve Smith. But ultimately, every year, we've got a guy (laughs) that gets compared to Steve Smith, right? So uh, the guy that shouldn't be compared to Steve Smith, but, but, you know, if we have to do it, it it would be Malik Washington, Virginia. He's a smaller guy, but he makes plays the way he can adjust to the football uh, and get open and then create those explosive plays. That's the guy late third, early fourth. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to go too much higher, but uh, that's a guy I think could see making a pretty instant impact uh, on defense. Andrew Phillips from Kentucky, a corner who doesn't get enough love uh, undersized, but he is a really good player. Uh, I think he's another guy that should be at least a second or third round pick that doesn't get the respect he deserves. Well, I mean, you mentioned Washington there. I mean, it just shows you, how deep this draft truly is at wide receiver. And I know we say it a lot. It seems that we're saying every year. This just feels that way. Uh, You know, having, you know, personally eyeballed them at the combine, they were just all eye-popping, and they were all big. It's many many really big and physical wide receivers also. And it maybe that's why you're seeing the Bills just say via condios to to Diggs uh, in part. And Gabe Davis, you saw the Chargers uh, let their – top two wide receivers out one by trade one by just letting walk Mike Williams I know he's coming back from an ACL I'm just wondering if if we're truly seeing the the league evaluate the wide receiver position in this draft appropriately Dane yeah you know? I, I'm, I'm convinced that the rest of our lives wide receiver is going to be a strength <laughs> uh that's if you're not a quarterback you're going to go to wide receiver if you're a young kid growing up because you want the ball in your hands. And that's what the NFL has become, uh, is a wide receiver league. And so last year was a strength. The year before, it was a strength. Mm. This year, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. at the top. But Malik Neighbors, some teams have him as wide receiver one. And uh, Do you? Do in, you? I mean, he's close. In last year, if Malik Neighbors were in last year's draft or the year before, he would have been my number one overall player in the entire draft. He is that type of talent. He just happens to be in a class this year with Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. So he's number three for me, but he has the talent. Uh, and he's just 20 years old. He doesn't even turn 21 until July, his first training camp. And he led the SEC in catches each of the last two years. And you look at the traits, you look at the production. Uh, this, the simplest way to put it with Malik Neighbors, 
he doesn't have a limitation. There is not a single limitation to his game. So all these receivers are easy to get excited about. Ruma Dunze in that conversation as well. And then to your point, this is a position that stretches second round, third round, fourth round. A lot of really good wide receiver talent in this class. But I think they're going to go. I mean, in the first two rounds, we could see 14, 15 receivers. Wow. So it is a case of you can wait on your receiver, but – they're going to go fast, so I, I think we're going to see a lot of teams go that direction first, second round. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.